Good morning, Living Rock Church. This is one of my favorite Sundays of the year. Let's start it out by singing of how our God's grace is enough and how worthy He truly is. Let's stand together. question and then you guys will respond with we do do you feel the world is broken we do do you feel the shadows deepen we do do you know that all the dark will 
won't stop the light from getting through. Do you wish that you could see it all made new? we could bring, every song we could sing, every work that we can do. You're worthy of that and so much more, Lord. You're worthy of us coming together this Sunday and worshiping your name. You're worthy for all of the ministry. 
that Living Rock Church does, and so much more, Lord. Thank you for who you are and what you've done. Amen. Please take a moment and greet those around you. Church. Good morning, Living Rock. Thanks for coming today. We thank the Lord for great weather. We had VBS all this week underneath this big tent. You're actually sitting in Babylon right now. I don't know if you knew that. <laughs> yeah, America feels like Babylon some days. So we have a full morning together, and we're going to begin with uh, some baby dedications and then baptisms. I'm going to ask the Holfeck family to come up. Mike and Diane want to dedicate their twins this morning. Chloe and Benaya. And they've selected uh, the names of their children after some Bible verses, some Bible characters. Chloe is mentioned in 1 Corinthians 1. And she was the one who was very concerned about quarreling in the church. Ah, oh, she didn't like when church people were arguing, and she was the one who wanted to bring peace to the church and peace to the home. So we dedicate uh, Chloe today. May God bless Chloe Halda, so she lives up to her namesake, speaking truth and bringing unity to God's people. And then Benaiah, his, he's named after one of David's mighty men. And he's mentioned in 2 Samuel 23, where he fights, um, uh, he's a valiant fighter for King David, and my favorite story is when he chased the lion down a cave and killed the lion, and then it says, it was a snowy day. <laughs> now, he didn't just chase a lion, it was a snowy day, so that is a pretty brave name to live up to. So may God bless Benaiah Daniel so he lives up to his namesake, honoring God with his strength and being a doer of great deeds for the Lord. So when we dedicate babies, it's really a dedication for mom and dad, for the church, to help raise these children in the fear of the Lord. So Micah and Diane, I have this question for both of you today. Do you promise by God's help and in partnership with the church to provide a Christian home of love and peace to raise Chloe and Benaiah in the truth of our Lord's instruction and discipline and to encourage them one day to follow Jesus Christ as their Savior and Lord? If so, say, we do the Lord helping us. Now I want the church to stand because we're part of supporting this family and helping to raise the children, I ask you, do you, church, promise by God's help to be faithful in your calling as members of the body of Christ, to pray for this family, to encourage these parents to be faithful to God, to help train Chloe and Beniah in the ways of the Lord so that they might one day know Jesus and follow Jesus as Savior and Lord. If so, say, we do, the Lord helping us. Let's pray for this family. I'm going to come behind you. <laughs> In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we dedicate these twins, these children, Chloe and Benaiah, for the glory of God alone. And what is dedicated to God cannot be used for any other purpose. Lord, fill this family with the Holy Spirit to raise this tribe in the fear of the Lord 
and to love and serve Jesus Christ all the days of their life. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. God bless you. Let's give them a hand. You may be seated. We have three children who want to follow the Lord in baptism today. Melina Gonzalez, Elise Cano, and Barnabas Hofek. If you three would come up here and stand in front of the church. I know you're here. <laughs> now in our church, we dedicate the children. And then when people have received Christ as their Savior and Lord. They've been in a discipleship process and they're ready to be baptized. We practice believer's baptism that once their belief, their confession of Christ is clear, we take them to the waters of baptism and we baptize them in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ in the, Father, in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And the water just symbolizes the old life of sin is gone and forgiven, and they're raised, cleansed, washed to live a new life. So that's why we immerse in that beautiful white tank there. <laughs> so I'm going to ask the children a yes testimony. I'm going to ask them a question. And my question is going to be, do you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus is your Lord and Savior if so, say, I do. So, Melina, you're first. Do you confess today that Jesus is your Lord and Savior? Yes. That was good. <laughs> Elise, do you confess today that Jesus is your Lord and Savior? Yes, I do. And Barnabas, do you confess today? Look this way. I do. Wait a second. <laughs> do you confess today that Jesus is your Lord and Savior? I do. All right, let's go line up at the tank. How great the chasm that lay between how high the mountain I could not climb In desperation I turned to heaven And spoke your name into the night Then through the darkness Your loving kindness Tore through the shadows of my soul the work is finished the end is written Jesus Christ my living hope who could imagine so great a mercy what heart could fathom such boundless grace the God of angels stepped down from glory to wear my sin and bear my shame the cross has spoken I am forgiven the King of kings calls me his own Beautiful Savior, I'm yours forever. Oh, Jesus Christ, my living hope. Hallelujah. Praise the one who set me free. Hallelujah. Death has lost its grip on me. You have broken.
his resurrection and the new life we have. Then came the morning that sealed the promise. Your buried body began to breathe. Out of the silence, the roaring lion declared the grave has no claim on the morning that sealed the promise your buried body began to song that I've been wanting to do here since I got here. And it's a little bit more upbeat and wacky than what we normally do here. Um, but because I'm leaving next Sunday, I thought, <laughs> what can they do? Fire me? Um, <laughs> no, Roger totally likes the song. But um, this is kind of a different song. We're going to celebrate the song has really, really profound words. It says, you have brought me back with the riches of your amazing grace and relentless love. I'm made alive forever with you, life forever. I once was dead in sin, alone and hopeless. A child of wrath I walked, condemned in darkness, but your mercy brought new life. And in your loving kindness raised me up with Christ and made me righteous. Now, if that's not a baptism song, I don't know what it is. Let's sing together. Dead in sin, alone and hopeless. A child of wrath, I walk, stemmed in darkness. But your mercy brought new life, and in your loving kindness, raised me up with Christ and made me righteous. You have brought me back with the riches of your amazing grace and relentless love I made a life forever with you, life forever by your grace I'm saved. are the light that broke the darkness. You satisfy my soul when I am heartless. Never I forget my true identity. Show me who I am and help me to believe. You have Love, 
sin has been erased I'll never be the same my sin has been erased I'll never be the same you have brought me back with the riches of your amazing grace and relentless love I made a lie forever with you like forever by your grace I'm saved you have brought me back with the riches of your amazing grace and relentless love I made a lie forever with you like forever by your grace I'm saved Be seated. And that's some, so fun to sing out that truth with you. I'm going to invite forward our VBS director, uh, Vonda Titi. Let's give her a round of applause. Maybe we'll sing some more fun songs. Well, VBS kids, do you remember this week? Do you remember this was the Babylonian marketplace? And now we're worshiping God in this tent. It's so fun, isn't it? So all the kids and grown-ups that were part of VBS this week, please come up. And I'm kind of worried that I haven't seen Lainey this morning. There she is, our fearless song leader. Let's try to line up here, you guys, and have the older kids in the back and the younger kids in the front. So you'd be in the front, sugar. There we go. There we go. We want to squish in, squish in, because we are going to show you guys what a great time we had this week with some two really great songs that we learned. So there we go, it's looking good. Squeeze it in, oh sorry, hitting the head. Squeeze it in. Say it again. What about maybe stand? Right there, you, gotta, you need to lead us. We don't, Lainey is the trooper. All right, where, whoever's hitting it, let's hit song one. Okay. You guys gotta do this, for real. Kathy Sutherland.
Thank you, everybody. Have a seat. Well, I just have a couple minutes to tell you a few things about the week. I was counting up how many people helped us with VBS at some point. And I, even sitting here this morning, thought of somebody else. So what 45, wait a minute, 44 adults and 12 youth helped in some way with VBS. So we had a huge part of our church that was helping, which is such a privilege. Um, and then we had 57 kids, right, Kathy? 57 kids were here for VBS this week, which was awesome. We um, decided to keep our mission focused this year in town. So we, um, with your help, gathered about 300 pounds of food and uh, $131 to give to the food shelf of Norwood Young America. So we're so grateful. Very grateful for that. And when the kids had a chance with Daniel, a.k.a. Levi, and Greg, or Ashpenaz, a.k.a. Greg, um, they had the chance to pray to trust Christ, and 20 of our kids did that this year. So we're very excited about that, too. Um, for me, VBS is one of the most or anything really like VBS with ministry stuff, when we're all pulling together doing this, this is the church. Like, this is church, too, and lots of things mean church, but working alongside other people, hearing from the Lord, ministering to kids, ourselves hearing from the Lord, it's just church, and I, I absolutely love it, except for the times that I'm super annoyed and it's raining. But besides that, it is so great. So I want to thank you guys for your support, whether you prayed or gave or volunteered. I wish I could list out the people that did the things they did, because I know that we, I say this every year. I really know that. But this year was just a little bit more because we had a different format and it required a lot. Um, we would love for you to go into the Lester Shed before you leave today and see our beautiful set. Is it still standing? Okay, good. Um, it is beautiful, thanks to lots of people. And I would love for you to see that and just kind of experience a little bit of what our kids did. So thanks so much, church. I want to thank Vonda for your infectious joy for Jesus. And here's a thank you card from Living Rock and for leading us. You did an awesome, awesome job. So thank you. Uh, now I, uh, we're going to have a few elders come forward and share about our building project. I welcome Sheldon and Dennis. Thank you. Clarification, I'm not an elder. I'm a retired elder. <laughs> yeah, I'm getting eldery all the time. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm Sheldon Sorensen, and I'm representing the building committee today. And I have a series of questions that you might want to ask. Uh, the first is, what is the current estimate of our building project, if you wanted to ask that? Good question. Three point, <laughs> 3 point seven million is our current estimate for the total project, 3.7, okay? And what areas do we still have to uh, firm up? We had a curveball or a little bit of a surprise earlier in the year when we uh, were working with the county. They're asking us to add some highway work out on County Road 31. So it's a right turn lane for traffic that would be turning into the church driveway. That's an adder to our project. Um, we're waiting on design approval from the county and uh, then we'll price it out. But our, we have a plugged in number of $100,000 for a right turn lane. I have never purchased a right turn lane before. <laughs> so. So there we are, but that's in the 3.7 million. Um, what did we accomplish? What have we accomplished in 2023? Sometimes we wonder what's going on. Um, we took bids and did an initial round of bidding back in March of 23. We had a good number of 3.6 something million, um, but we found over the next several weeks and months that we had not given our local subcontractors enough opportunity to bid, and we really want to try to use local 
subcontractors as much as we possibly can and support the local community. So we, we're working with the builder to go back out and we've rebid portions of the project using local subs. That's actually allowed us to save close to $100,000 already in the pricing. But unfortunately, we get to buy a right turn lane, so <laughs> we're still about $3.7 million. Um, you might ask, what did we not accomplish in 2023? And if you were to ask that, I would say we had hoped initially to be breaking ground this year. Um, but it looks with the amount of time it's taken to rebuild and this uncertainty on the county highway work, um, we will not be ready for a, another several weeks or months with that highway project um, understanding. So it's unlikely that we're going to break ground in 2023. There's too much that would still need to be done. And contractors are now busy finishing up their 2023 work. So they're going to be much more interested in looking at the project starting after the winter. Okay. Um, what is left to do? You might ask that. Uh, thank you. This has taken a while, Corey, but thank you. So... <laughs> Uh, we're going to continue to work with our uh, engineers to get that county highway work figured out and priced. Um, and then we will uh, basically just be ready to rebid portions. Our, our uh, builder is telling us that they think that we will actually benefit by further cost reductions if we rebid portions of the project going into the fall and winter. There is something of a slowdown in the residential home building market. That will make more contractors and suppliers available for our project. So we're hopeful that that might bring prices down a little bit. And then if we go uh, continue on, well, the next big step would be to uh, do all our permit applications with the county. So with that, I'm going to hand it to Dennis. Hi, and I'm, I'm Dennis. I'm one of the elders here. And I'm going to just hit on a little bit of uh, what conditions the question is, if you were to ask this, what conditions would help us continue to move forward? Well, the big thing, obviously, would be for interest rates to come down. Um, that's one of the big things that has hit us pretty hard um, is the, the interest. Um, and so if we can be seeing that come down, it would help a lot. Um, along with that, what are the banks telling us about interest rates? Well, about 18 months ago, it was, you know, we're talking about 4%, and now we're up to about 8% um, for loans. And on a $2 million loan, that's what we're kind of looking at. We're talking, we've gone from, from you know, originally maybe about $10,500 a month uh, payment up to over $15,000 a month. So it's just kind of gotten carried away uh, to a point where it's just probably not feasible to move forward and, and responsible to do that. Um, along with that, though, um, one of the exciting things, I guess I'd say, is, is the Lord has protected us, and, and he's still with us, because had we, in those original bids that we had gotten, had we moved forward and said, yep, let's do that, we would be in a situation right now where our construction loan and potentially our final loan would be at these very high interest rates and we would be stuck with some major, major payments that we probably couldn't afford to do right now. So the Lord in his great wisdom has slowed things down for us. You know, it's kind of disappointing, but yet he's here. He's taking care of us and he's going to move us forward. He's protecting us. And in those same lights, with the interest rates the way they are, we're currently, we're currently right now, cash-wise, we're sitting at about $1.4 million in cash that the church has put together for this project. And we've got that, the Lord's allowed us now with those interest rates, it's good and bad, obviously, but we're investing that funds right now. And those funds are making anywhere from right now, our, our lowest return right now is, is 3.7. Um, percent and our highest is a little over five percent. So we're averaging a little around four and a half, four point seven percent interest on a million and one point four million. And that's bringing in about five, four to five, six thousand dollars a month in interest that's coming in to us and growing. So, so I say all that 
I say all that because you know, if you look at it, we're looking at a one point or three point seven million dollar loan or building project, and we only have one point four million, and we're taking out a two million dollar loan. Well, where's the difference? Well, there's the difference. Part of the difference is that interest is coming in. Part of the difference is we want to continue to pray. Um, one of the things we want to talk about here is what are some things we can do in the future here. Keep praying for our project. Keep praying for our general giving. Our general giving includes $144,000 towards our building. So you take $144,000 plus $60,000, there's our $200,000-some-thousand to make up some of that difference. So the Lord is taking care of us. So we just keep praying that uh, um, interest rates will come down, that we'll stay faithful. Um, what else do I have here? I guess I've talked about some of the, the reasons to be, be thankful, and that is that, that the Lord is he's still with us. He's taking care of this project. Um, we want to keep praying that he'll just come, keep moving in great, mighty ways like he has. He's, he brought in numerous gifts to us, unexpected gifts, and he is, he's in well in control, and we praise him and thank him for that. Um, we do have, at the end of the service, back on the table, I believe it'll be, there'll be a piece of paper that has some of these questions listed with our written answers in there, so you can grab those um, just to refresh your memory. But overall, I just want to quickly have a word of prayer, praising the Lord. Father, just thank you for this body. Thank you for your blessing upon Living Rock. We thank you for your protection through difficult times um, financially and economically and just all the things in society that are going on. You've protected us so well. We sense your presence. We know you're here with us, Lord. Thank you for being our God and Savior. Bless this time together. Bless Living Rock Church, Lord. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Please stand. We're going to sing a song as we close out that time of announcements and uh, baptisms and worship and go into a time of worship through the word. Um, we're going to sing what a beautiful name and what I really want us, our hearts to dwell on during this time is why we do all of this. It is for the glory of God and his beautiful, wonderful, powerful name. That's why we do it. Let's sing together.
people said? Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Thank you, worship team. How many of you, this is your first time out here to our property? Can I see your hands? First time out here, all these Crown College. Who's from out of state? Tell, just yell out, what state are you from? Atlanta. All right. That's why we call it the world headquarters right here. So my job is to make you hungry because we're going to eat soon. I'm going to feed you with the Word of God. We'll look at four verses today. Maybe you know that Hawaii has been in the news this month, the deadliest wildfire the country has ever seen in a hundred years uh, happened there in Maui. You know, when I think of Maui, I don't think of wildfires, do you? Uh, but it was just a terrible devastation. They said the winds were blowing 70 miles an hour. A whole city was burned down in minutes, it seemed. Some people actually drove their cars into the ocean to get away from the fire. And they said 100 people have died, but it's probably more like 500 or maybe even 1,000. 2,200 structures, mostly homes, were damaged. Billions of dollars to rebuild. And now this week, we're starting to hear about the response, that the response was weak. Lots of finger pointing going on. People did not have any way to contact others, no cell service. There was delays with the water, power line problems, and then no emergency sirens went off. No emergency sirens went off. And so I read in in an interview that they asked the administrator, why didn't the sirens go off? And he said he decided not to blow the sirens because the system was used for tsunamis. So he was worried if he blew the sirens, everybody would head head to the mountains and drive right into the fire. That sounds like a reasonable answer, but I'm thinking, I want to hear a siren, don't you? And one, one resident who lost his home said, if I could have heard a siren that morning, I would have at least been prepared. I could have packed something in my car. I could have called my parents. But the administrator said, no, he did the right thing. He did not blow the sirens. Well, he lost his job this week. And then the state senator said, these are not tsunami sirens. They're, they're disaster sirens. They're early warning sirens. And, and if they had been blown, the people would have figured out it was about the fire Oh, the Lord, Lord help them through this tragedy. Uh, what do you think? If a disaster is coming, do you want to hear a siren? I do. I want to be warned ahead of time. If the fire is coming, if a tornado is coming, if a flood is coming. Did Jesus ever blow a disaster siren? Did he ever warn us of a disaster coming, not to some faraway island, but to everybody's houses? Did he ever warn us of that? Yes, he did. Well, where did he do this? Well, we look to the end of the Sermon on the Mount, the last few verses of the Sermon on the Mount today. Matthew 7, 24, here's what it says. Therefore, Jesus says, he's wrapping up this world's greatest sermon. Therefore, he says, everyone who hears these words of mine and acts on them will be like a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain fell, and the floods came, and the winds blew and slammed against the house, and yet it did not fall. For it had been founded on the rock. And everyone who hears these words of mine and does not act on them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. And the rain fell, and the floods came, 
and the winds blew and slammed against that house, and it fell, and its collapse was great. This is the word of God. Father, we thank you for this time, this joyful time we've had this morning so far. And now I pray you would feed us with the word of God. Help us to hear the warning of Jesus he gives to us here to build our lives wisely on the rock. Amen. So Jesus here is warning of houses collapsing. That sounds like a tragedy, doesn't doesn't it? In the Sermon on the Mount, that's Matthew 5, Matthew 6, Matthew 7. And Jesus doesn't use a horn. He's using his words. He says, act on my words. You must do what I say because disaster is coming if you don't do what I say. Your house, your life, depend on it. Don't just hear. Don't just act, but hear and act wisely on my word. It's, it's the only wise course of action. Why? He says the rain is coming. The flood waters are coming. The winds are coming. Verse 25 says, your house, meaning your life, it will be slammed. It's, it's a violent, violent language here. The house will be pounded and beaten upon. Philip's translation says the winds will roar upon the house. Have you ever experienced such a rough time? You just felt like the winds and the floods were just blowing on your life. That has happened to us. So Jesus sounds the alarm. A great storm is coming, he says. It will hit everyone. Well, what is Jesus talking about here? Well, I think he's talking about two different storms. First, there's the storms that hit our lives, all of us, and then there, are, there is that storm, that final storm coming of God's judgment. So let's look at these storms that hit our lives. Jesus talks about these in the Sermon on the Mount. I, I read through these three chapters this week, Matthew 5, Matthew 6, Matthew 7, and you can see storms there, painful things that Jesus said what happened. He said, there will be mourning in life. There will be persecution for Christians. Hateful things will be said about us. There will be adversity. Jesus says, you can expect all these things, but God will bless you in these storms. That's called the Beatitudes. Remember the Beatitudes? And then Jesus warned us about relational danger. There will be lust and adultery and divorce and these things bring down a marriage and a home, don't they? So painful. And Jesus said, you must keep yourselves pure and remain faithful. And Jesus told us right after that about the dangers of revenge. How how we just want to get even. And we expect equality in life, but it isn't going to be like that. Jesus gave us a standard. He said, Be perfect as your heavenly Father is perfect. Well, where do you find that in this world? So he calls us to a standard of righteousness that is well beyond this world. Christ calls us to to righteous living that only God can give us through Christ. That's chapter 5. In chapter 6, Jesus sounded the alarm about hypocrisy. Don't be a hypocrite. He said, true worship is about worship of the one true God. And and don't serve the Lord just to be a hero, just to be rewarded by people, because that's not really serving the Lord, is it? Do your giving and your fasting and your praying and your religious duty. Do it in secret. So God sees you in secret and rewards you. God will reward you. You know, when we live for the praise of people, that can be such a trap. And that can really bring us down. And then Jesus warned us about the dangers of unforgiveness and greed. He said, forgive others like God forgives you. And don't let money be your master. And then surprisingly, the longest part of the Sermon on the Mount is about worry 
and anxiety and fear. And Jesus said, seek first the kingdom of God. He will take care of what you need for today and tomorrow. So just think about how much worry and anxiety and fear can just beat against your soul and your mind and rob your health and damage your home. Am I right about that? It's a flood. And then in chapter 7, Jesus talked about judgment. He says, treat other people like you want to be treated. Don't judge others unfairly. Get the speck out of your eye. Remember that part? Let God be the one true judge. And then Jesus ends his sermon with putting these choices before us. Will we walk the narrow way to life or will we take this wide path to hell? It's easier. The narrow way is harder, but so much better. And then he puts another choice before us. What kind of a tree will we be? Will we, will we be trees that bear good fruit or will we be like those barren trees that are useless and are chopped down? And then he asks us, what kind of followers of God will we be? Will we be able to discern and distance ourselves from the hypocrisy and all the fraud that's committed in the name of religion? He said, there's even people who are going to say, Lord, Lord, and they're going to be able to cast out demons and do miracles and give prophecies. And Jesus says, I don't know who they are. Don't follow them. Follow me. Do we know the difference? Do we know what kind of a follower we are? Disaster strikes us when we follow false religion, false promises, false teachers. All this trouble is like rain. It's like floods. It's like wind. And it pounds away at our hearts and minds and our homes The worry, the fear, the greed, the hypocrisy, the anger, the lust, the divorce, the false accusation, persecution, revenge, unforgiveness, and lies Jesus talked about in the Sermon on the Mount. All this sin, it's like rain, it exposes our foundations. Who are we living for? What are we standing on? Will we be able to hold up? In all this bad weather, well, yes, we can if we stand on the rock. Who is the rock? It's Jesus. It's his teachings. So Jesus here is sounding the disaster alarm. You know what he's saying? He says, everybody, get off the sand. We're going to have bad weather in our lives. Run to the rock of Christ. And that means we hear him and we do what he says. Make the teachings of Jesus your mission in life to do what he says, to hear and do what he says. Then you will find safety and security through the storms of life. Now, I want you to notice something. He doesn't say he's going to take away the rain, does he? He doesn't say, oh, come to me, there'll never be a flood. He doesn't say, come to me, the wind will never blow. You'll never have to see a tornado or a hurricane. All these things are going to happen. But when we come to him, we have a foundation. We have hope. We have a place of safety to go to in Christ. This week, this tent was changed into Babylon, and the children learned about Daniel And you know what? When you read the story of Daniel, it's about 500 years before the time of Christ. His whole life was a storm. You know, not too many things went right for Daniel. But in the end, he stood firm. You know, his home was burned in Jerusalem when he was a teenager, when he was very young. He was taken, he was kidnapped uh, to a foreign land. He went to Babylonian University. He hated the food. And he, he had a difficult time. He was harassed for practicing his faith and threatened. He was alone. They threw him in a lion's den because he wouldn't obey the king. 
He was politically incorrect. But God was with him in every storm. And Daniel helped produce that remnant of faithful Jewish people that 70 years later, 70 years later, they went back to Jerusalem and they rebuilt the city and rebuilt the temple. And out of that remnant came Jesus Christ. This weekend, Living Rock Church is 21 years old. Happy birthday, church. How in the world did we survive year after year doing church like this without a home, without a building? Do you know why we live? We live because Christ lives in us. That's the only reason. Christ lives in us and God has brought together a people who want to hear and do what Christ says. And Christ says, build a church. And that's what we're doing. And we trust that the Lord will help us. We face many storms as a church. We've gotten through many, many tough times. And God will get us through again in the coming year. But there's another alarm that Jesus sounds here, looking to the future of that final judgment day. But Jesus said this about that foolish man. The winds blew, slammed against his house, and it fell, and its collapse was great. Now, I believe this great collapse that Jesus is talking about is much more than one guy losing one cabin. No, it's devastating. We're talking about cities. We're talking about nations that are collapsing. The language is strong, meaning utter destruction. So Jesus is speaking here with great authority. He's telling the world, do not ignore me and my words. Your life depends on it. Your eternity depends on it. Without Christ, every house in every city in every nation will collapse under the weight of God's judgment. And who is that final judge? Who has God appointed to be the final judge of this world? It's Jesus Christ. He's coming again. And I think this whole illustration here of the rock and the sand, the flood and the disaster, that's all coming from Isaiah 28. It's very interesting to read Isaiah 28. And you can see that Jesus is borrowing from that image. Because in Isaiah 28, Isaiah is sounding the alarm over the city of Jerusalem. Jerusalem was under God's judgment because they were following idols, and they weren't listening and obeying God. They were under God's judgment. Well, what did the religious leaders do in the time of Isaiah when he blew the alarm? What did they do? It tells us they refused to sound the alarm. They were foolish, Isaiah says. They thought they could avoid God's judgment, it says. They, they thought they could cheat death, dodge the grave, avoid the flood. Destruction won't happen to us. God won't judge us. That's what they were saying. Have you ever heard that? But they were building on sand because the flood was coming. And we read in Isaiah 16, 28, 16, God says, I'm placing a stone a foundation stone in Jerusalem. It's a cornerstone. It's the only safe place to build on, and whoever believes in this cornerstone will never be shaken. They will be saved. So God sent a rock to save them. Who does that sound like? A storm, Isaiah said, is going to come and knock down your refuge of lies. A flood is going to come and carry you away and that's what happened. You remember what happened? The Babylonian army came in. 
and destroyed the city and burned the city down and took away Daniel and his friends to Babylon. Now Peter tells us in 1 Peter 2 that the cornerstone God is talking about here is Jesus. And when we build our lives on Jesus, we will not be shaken Whatever happens, and we become stabilized too. We become living stones so that we can build up the house of God in Christ and stand up against those storms that will come and also stand in that judgment day. So hear the warning signal of Christ today from the end of the Sermon on the Mount. The rain is coming. The flood is coming. The winds are coming. I wish I could tell you some of the trials and tests that many people here have gone through today. You look at them, you'll see them having a hamburger, and you'll be tempted to say, oh, look at those people. They have no problems. That's not true. They may be going through tougher days than you are. What's the difference? They're standing on the rock of Christ. That's how we get through. That's how we all get through. So let's build our lives, our families, our church on the rock so we can stand up against the beating that life sends our way. Let's get off the sand. You know what the sand is. Let's get off the sand and repent and build our lives on Christ. Isaiah 26 says, for, the, for in God the Lord we have an everlasting rock. So I watched some of the document, documentary called Quarterback. I saw a couple episodes of Kirk Cousins and then other NFL quarterbacks. Episode 7 is called Win or Go Home. And it shows the Vikings playing the Giants in that playoff game. Sorry to bring this up. We lost 24 to 31 after such a great season last year. And then we lost that first playoff game. And the documentary shows Kirk Cousins driving home after the game with his wife, Julie. And he gets home and he's trying to walk up the stairs. He's so sore from getting beat up in that game and getting knocked down so many times. And he reads to his son, and he tucks him into bed with a song and a prayer. Now, what do you suppose he's saying to his young boy? On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. Then he says a prayer and tucks his boy in, and that's the end of Cousins. What a testimony. What a great testimony. What a way to finish. You know, life isn't all about winning the game. It's about how you lose and who you're trusting in. And he's still a winner, isn't he? Because he's got his family grounded on the rock of Christ. Living Rock, we're beginning year 22 this fall. I would just like us to refocus. Let's just keep it simple. Let's hear what Christ says. And let's do what Christ says. Can we do that? Let's live up to our name, living rock. Let's live on the rock. Amen? Let's pray. The worship team is going to come and we're going to sing that hymn. And then I'll have a few announcements before we start our picnic. Father in heaven, bring us off the sand today. All of us, individually and families, help us to get refocused on Jesus. And Lord, thank you for helping us through some storms this year. We've felt the rain and the flood and the winds blowing against us. We've been fearful and anxious. 
We've, we've tried to work through the lies we've heard and even told ourselves. And Lord, fill us now with your spirit. Give us grace. Just pour your truth on this body and give us strength to refocus and get grounded again on Jesus to hear and do what he says for your glory alone as we start this new year. We love you. We thank you for giving your life to save us. And we pray that we would be a light. All of our families would be a light for Jesus Christ. We pray in your name. Amen. Let's stand and sing. is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest strength, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. When dark his fails his lovely face I rest on his unchanging grace in every high and stormy gale my anchor holds within the veil I'm Christ the solid rock I stand all other ground is sinking sand all other ground His covenant, His blood, support me in the whelming flood. And all around my soul can sway, He then is all my hope and stay. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. When he shall come with trumpet sound, oh, may I then in him be found, dressed in his righteousness alone. Call us to stand before the throne and Christ the solid rock I stand all other ground is sinking sand all other ground is sinking sand on Christ the solid rock I stand all other ground is sinking sand all other ground is sinking sand. You may be seated. Just a few announcements before we begin our picnic together. Um, the food trailer is up there, so just begin a line uh, out here behind the tree. And we do have some salads and desserts over on the tables there. There's bouncy houses for the children to play in. We have tables there that if we can get a hand, we'll set up some tables here and you can bring your chairs around those tables there and dine in the shade here or you can dine in the shade up by the bouncy houses there. We have restrooms there and inside the farmhouse if you need a restroom. Uh, Monday night, the ladies are having a gathering out here. Uh, I found out they're not going to take the tent down until Tuesday. So ladies, you can meet under the tent here uh, Tuesday night and be in the shade. Monday night. Monday night. Um, Monday night, that's right. Stifton's Fest, Faith and Family Night is Thursday night. 
The worship team will be playing at what, 5.30? Yeah. Something like that? Do you know, Levi? Somewhere around there. Yeah, let's say 5.30-ish. <laughs> and then I'll be at the dunk tank. You can dunk me if you want. Uh, <laughs> Thursday night, lots of fun, and we have some Christian artists coming in. So the churches in town put together this Thursday night, Faith and Family Night, and we encourage you to come. And next Sunday, we'll be back at St. John's for worship at 9.30. And we're also doing our farewell for Levi and Ashley and William. We'll say goodbye to them. Please bring a card, a thank you note, a gift, a love gift. If you want to share in the offering, we can send them off and give them a happy farewell. He's going to Reamer, Minnesota. Anybody been to Reamer, Minnesota? Levi is going to pastor the Alliance Church up there. So you may be wondering, how are we going to fill his shoes? Because Levi has got some pretty big shoes to fill, having uh, served us for four years as our worship leader. And I want to introduce to you uh, today, Joe Yates. Joe Yates is right there. Stand up, Joe. <laughs> Joe is a student at Crown College. He's working on his... MDiv, his Master's of Divinity, and I've been talking to Joe for a year about possible ministry at Living Rock, and he's been meeting with Levi, and he'll take over the coordination role and lining up the teams and getting the, the music and the worship uh, ready each week, and he's, he's also the chaplain for the Crown College football team, and so he loves the Lord, and he's He's just perfect for our time of need. So thank you, Joe, for stepping forward. And also adding to the team is Lauren. Lauren Bleese here. She's going to come. She's going to come and help us twice a month to fill out the worship teams, and she plays 70 instruments. So <laughs> wherever we need a little help, she's just going to jump in and... And play. So we're thankful that the Lord has helped us in all these transitions. Let me say thank you again to all the volunteers. Vonda mentioned about 60 total for VBS. And then just to get this set up and torn down, add another 15 or 20. And let me give a shout out to Jane Werner. She's probably Volunteer of the Week. Jane? Jane, you're back there. Yeah. You say, well, what did she do? Oh, let me tell you what she did. Dean was driving the truck over here with all our stuff, and he ran out of gas. So Jane had to go get gas for the truck. And Jane, you know, we wouldn't have church without Jane, so everybody thanked Jane. <laughs> I could tell she loves it. <laughs> Next Sunday, I'm going to announce more about our fall changes in our setup when we begin in September, what church will be like back at the elementary school. We've decided as a board and a staff to stay with one worship service, one worship service at 930 when we go into the fall, and then we'll do education for all the ages at 1045 to 1130. It'll be the same amount of time, a little bit shorter, and we actually need the time. We need to simplify things because it looks like we'll be trucking and hauling things back and forth every Sunday. So we want to give to the church their Saturday nights back and try to get everything compressed into that Sunday morning time, worship and education time for all ages. I'll talk more about that next week. Now... I'm going to leave the tank open all afternoon and all night. And if somebody's here and you want to be baptized and you know you need to pray and make things right with God and welcome Jesus as your Savior and Lord, you just grab me by the shirt, pull me up here by this tank, and we'll take a little bath together, all right? And sometime this afternoon or tonight, you just let me know 
or we'll do it right now. Because more than anything else, I want all of us to know Jesus. Amen? And to know that you know Jesus as your Savior and Lord. All right, let me pray and give the benediction. Father, we thank you for your love, your truth. You are our creator. Life does not make sense until we orient ourselves around who you are, your son and your spirit, and we get clarity and direction and purpose and meaning, and we understand why you put us in this world and what we're living for. We can't wait to see you, Jesus, when you come again and bring us a new heaven and earth and how we want all of us to be there, all of our children and friends and family to come and stand on the rock and be ready for your return. Thank you for this body and this time to worship you. We pray that you've been pleased and glorified in all that has been said and done. Now bless our time as we fellowship together and eat and play. Give us joy, Lord, and joy as a church as we begin this new year for each family. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. Amen.